Hello, hello, it's Amy from Seriously Sweet and Cookie Snack Attack. Welcome to part two of two of two tutorial Tuesday. How much fun are we going to have tonight? All right, guys, let's see. How are you this evening? Hello. I just wanted to tell you a few quick housekeeping things and then we'll go and take a look at comments. So if you want to drop anything over there in the comment section for me to take a look at, I'll be there in just a second. If you are participating in the Gnomes and Florals year-long group, it's two designs per month, started in January. <clears throat> the months are broken up into guides so that it's easy to follow. Pre-recorded tutorials, supply lists, cookie snack attack, cookie education system cards, the works. If you're participating in that, this month our theme was the Leprechaun for St. Patrick's Day. So if you are in there, let's start seeing those cookies, both in Cookie Snack Attack and in the Gnome and Floral group. Let's get those out there so people can see them before St. Patrick's Day. And if you have not started participating yet, it's not too late to jump in because we're going to start the second quarter of Gnomes and Florals. And starting on <clears throat> the... Cutters can start to be purchased this Friday, STL files this Friday. That way you guys can get ready. April's items for this group will not drop into the group until April 1st. That includes everything about the class, including the supply list, because this is a yearly group that something new goes in each month. So just wanted to let you know that. So if you're not in there yet, it's not too late to jump in. And I'll just tell you, they're super cute. April is Easter, May is spring, and June is a beach theme. Very cute. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you anything else right now. <clears throat> all right. So you have those dates. You can start purchasing the second quarter cutters physical cutter set of four on our website, www.seriouslysweetcupcakes.com. In fact, let me put that up there so it's part of the video so you don't have to type that in. This is where the cutters will be for sale and then the cutters will actually start shipping the following week on the 15th. STL files will be available immediately so you can start printing your cutters and getting ready, okay? Um, the only thing on the supply list for all three months that I'm going to tell you about early is any fondant molds that we're using. I'm going to drop those into the group immediately and just let you know what mold, what month, and then that way you can decide whether you want to buy the molds and go ahead and get them ordered in so you can do it all at one time. Or if you want to make royal icing transfers and get prepared for that. Okay, so that takes care of gnomes and florals. I'm going to leave that website ticker running just so you can see that. Don't forget Cookie Athon is coming up. I'm an instructor on April 1st. We're going to be doing that really cute 3D shaker B Skep cookie. Totally cute. And then if you purchase the extended access, if you would consider purchasing it under my referral link, it helps because we are in a little commission and I turn that back into covering costs for the live streaming. So if you guys are up for that, we would really appreciate the support for the group through our live stream link, which is pinned at the top of our Cookie Snack Attack page and our Seriously Sweet store page. Would love to have that. Um, also in the extended access, there's a whole separate tutorial where you take these same cookies, but you make a 3D Easter basket on a little pedestal and it's adorable too. All right. So don't forget about that. And then guys coming up after that, um, beginning of May, we'll be in Sandusky, Ohio with cookie con 2023. This is my morning class on Tuesday. This is called Be the Sparkle. This is my evening class on Tuesday, which is called XOXO. They're both fashion related, as you can see here from these pictures. They coordinate. So if you end up taking both classes, um, you can shadow box everything together because it's meant to coordinate. Just wanted to give you multiple options for Cookie Con. Who's excited? All right. Big housekeeping information. Tomorrow, Tomorrow night, we are going to have a live stream at 7 p.m. And during that live stream, I'm going to give you all the information on how to get signed up for the Cookie Snack Attack Mixer happening Thursday evening. 
is it Thursday evening? Just making sure. Hold on. Let's just make sure. I don't want to tell anybody anything wrong. I just want to double check this. We have a mixer that is going to occur on May 4th, Thursday evening from 6 to 8 in the Belux Grill and Bar. So tomorrow evening, we will start live streaming at 7. If you're going to Cookie Con and you're going to participate in the mixer, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get signed up for it. We can hold up to 60 people in the room. So you're going to want to do that right away. But here's what I decided. I think it's going to be too much because I know... People have decisions to make and they have to calculate and all these things, okay? So here's what we're going to do. What you're actually going to do tomorrow night is I'm going to give you instructions on how to do the first part of it. And then you're not going to have to choose your menu tomorrow night. I'm just going to get you signed up. So have your credit card ready because what you're going to do is basically purchase with a down payment on your pass um you're going to purchase a pass for the and put and purchase that at a set amount everybody will pay the same amount tomorrow night it might only be five bucks it could be ten bucks whatever but it's going to be a set amount um and that will guarantee you your spot and then you're going to have a week to print out the pdf that i'm going to post in the group and print that out select your meal total it up with tax and tip and then paypal the remainder of the money to me through friends and family that way it'll be nice and fair and nobody will miss out that wanted to go because they're fooling around with a menu okay that's really that's the easiest way i can think to do it so nobody misses out tomorrow night all right and if you're participating in the gift exchange um, as soon as we have everybody's info in, then I can confirm to you, yeah, for sure we're doing 60 people, but do 61 items. If you're not participating, then that'll bring our countdown of what people want to do. But I can tell you already, at least eight people have messaged me that I know will definitely be going, that are helping in some way or assistance or something. So they're, they'll definitely be there. Um, they are doing customized cookie snack attack items, the things they're making are specific for just this part of the gift exchange. They're not going to be anywhere else at cookie con. They'll be just at the cookie snack attack mixer that we're having at Belux on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, May 4th from 6 to 8 PM. We'll talk more about it tomorrow night. It'll be in a separate video. I'll start at 7 PM. Okay. Now let me just say, providing there's no emergencies that I have to deal with tomorrow. Got it? <laughs> we'll be there. If that happens, then I'll move it to Thursday night, but I'm prepared to do it tomorrow night at seven. We've got everything all set for you. Let's say hi to a few people. Hi, Whoopi. How are you? Barbie, it's so good to see you. Oh, also, may I please give a quick shout out to the Nada Bee of Two Bees and Nada Bee because Mary already has her Easter collaboration cookie turned in. So if you are in that collaboration, it's a private group. Go in there, find albums, start looking through the albums. Three people already have all of their pictures turned in and they are adorable. So Mary, congratulations. Her work is already turned in. She is the not a bee from the two bees, which is Becky and Barbie. So I saw Barbie's name. It made me think of it. Hello there, Facebook user. How are you? Hi, Teresa. How are you? Teresa, I'm going to message you tomorrow about something um, because of something um, that you messaged about a time constraint. So I'm going to message you in the morning. So just keep an eye on your Facebook messenger tomorrow. Um Pamela. Hello. How are you, my friend? Okay. So Miss Pamela and Miss Sharon and Miss Allison, these are some of my buddies here in Virginia. You guys, uh, Bucky's next to I-64. Seriously. I don't know when this thing is going to be done, but when it is, we're going to road trip, have lunch and do some shopping and just hang out. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mimi, how are you? If I have any other Virginia friends that want to meet up there so they can experience Bucky's, I'm in. You just let me know. Hey, Charlotte. Charlotte, are you on the train tonight? Are you on the way home? Hey, Kathy. I am so excited. Now, does everybody understand what the plan is for tomorrow night? Just have your credit cards ready or whatever you normally use to 
buy stuff on my website because we're going to do it on the website at www.seriouslysweetcupcakes.com. It'll be a, like a ticket purchase up there. There's only going to be a limited amount available. It is only for the people going to Cookie Con, Sandusky, Ohio, and it's going to be a nominal amount, either five or ten dollars to go towards your overall total for your ticket. But that way you can just get on there and pay and get yourself a guaranteed spot. And then you'll have a week to fill out your um, menu choices, get that back to me and PayPal me through friends and family so I can prepay for your meals. Okay. Uh, they did tell me because our party is so large, basically anything over eight, this applies to, but our party could be close to 60 or 60. It could be 60 as much as 60 that there is a 20% gratuity added. So just be prepared for that. Um, if you add on any items, once you arrive, you'll pay for those separately, but they want to keep that as limited as possible because our group is so large and we have a time constraint. Okay. Hey, April, how are you? Deborah? Hello. Hello. You're making your cookie now. That's so cool. I'm excited. Nancy. Hello. Charlotte, you're working on your cookie too. That's so cool. Okay. Teresa says, okay. So that means, you know, I'll message you in the morning. New Kent. What? We have to wait till 2027? It's going to take four years? No, that cannot be right. Four years for real? I mean, it is a big place, but four years? Oh my gosh, Julie, we're getting a Bucky's in Virginia. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, so how is everyone this evening? Does anybody have any questions right now? I have one more really cool thing that I want to share with you that's going to be coming up. Um... April Kalanchik from Sweet and Saucy Life, who is the owner of the group that I did, um, participated in Cook Years Live. That's her event. Has these awesome subscription boxes. And you guys know I used to do box reveals. I had to stop for a while, but we're going to be getting back on that again. And she's given us an awesome discount code. So if all goes well, I have to preface everything in my life right now with if all goes well, because there's so much going on. But if all goes well, we're going to have a box reveal this weekend and a decorating um, video next week. And we've got two boxes to do box reveals on. We've got two. Let me just lift this up a little bit. Hold on. Here we go. We've got two cookie life boxes to do box reveals. And then potentially we're going to decorate cookies. Now, I don't know if we're going to decorate them all or just a, a couple that's in the set. I'm not sure yet, but we are going to do um, box reveal and decorating video. And we're going to be doing that every month. So that's exciting. We're getting that back on our calendar. So excited. Let's see. Hold on. Sharon, you didn't know it was 2027 either, right? I hope that information is wrong. I hope we're getting one really quick. Um, let's see. Stressing me out. I haven't even completed the B-Box. need to come up with an idea for the collab. <laughs> Mimi, isn't it great? You really only, you only have to do one cookie, so, right? So, <laughs> so it's nice. And everybody is staying in the color scheme, which is beautiful. It looks lovely, lovely. Um, love box reveals me to Bucky's in Virginia by 2027 was the opening date. I think that's what Allison was telling us. I'm so disappointed though. I thought it was going to be a lot sooner. All right, let me fix something real quick. I just, I don't pay attention to this as much as I probably should, but let me just move that up a little bit. So it's not where all the comments are. Okay. All right. Also on Friday, you can purchase our next online class. This is an intermediate level class that will be all pre-recorded. All five cookies will be recorded separately. And then there will, of course, be prep videos. There'll be a private group for it in Facebook. You can start to purchase it on Friday, this Friday. Let me tell you the date just so it's in the video. You can start to purchase that class on March 10th. You can order your cookie cutters or purchase your STL files starting on Friday. They will also ship the following week. And I think everything's going to start shipping on the 15th. I thought I was going to do one one day and one the other, but with some scheduling things that came up for next week, I think we're going to have to start shipping everything on the 15th. So that means gnomes and florals, second quarter cutters will be shipping. And then the 
if you need physical cutters for oh honey honey it's oh honey honey now can you sing that oh honey honey you know it's oh sugar sugar right so <laughs> be singing that song and that's uh, you can start purchasing on that friday we will put you immediately with within 24 hours rather let me give myself 24 hours we'll put you into the private facebook group in that group you'll immediately have the supply list so you can start ordering things you can go ahead and order your cutters on the website stl files on the website and then the finished videos will drop into the group on march 24th so that is two that's one full week one uh yeah, that's one week before cookie a thon starts. So you'll have something to work on if you're looking for something fun to do. And it coordinates with our advanced class that we just had that was class in a box. And that class was called B B box. B box, yeah, B box and daisies. So it coordinates with that. So if you're looking to make a nice Easter display, you're going to have a whole nother set of cookies you can do with that as well. And I hope that covers all the dates. Let's get up here, see if there's any questions about any of that. Hello, Myra. Hello, Debbie. Woohoo! I know I'm with you. Okay, don't forget four people. We had these different contests over like the last three months. Four people one things and they will be admitted to the intermediate group for free so you four people please don't purchase tickets i don't want to have to do a refund so myra pamela smith debbie why can't i think of the fourth person guys someone help me um oh and kelly Clements, please do not purchase tickets to the intermediate class because you won class admission. So we'll be putting you in there for free. Okay. All right. Now, earlier today, can we get on? We'll get on now to the second part of two tutorial Tuesday. How's that? So earlier today, I showed you a mold that is from the clay area in Michaels. In case you guys wanted to pick it up, um, they currently still have it. It's not a new mold. It's actually from last year. They do currently still have it, but you know, they change these things out often. So I thought you might want to go ahead and get this. And I thought it would be a good time to, um, we have a lot of new people in the group and several of them have messaged me. They're getting Easter collab pieces together and they wanted to kind of, they really wanted a mad scientist night, but we were already past Monday. Um, Oh, and Kelly, I received something in the mail from you, and it's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, they wanted to see dry dusted versus some things done with like Everclear and gel coloring. They wanted to see what that looks like. So I'm just going to do a demo on that tonight using this because this was something I had handy, and it's something we're going to be using as we go into summertime, okay? Like on two tutorial Tuesday, not in a class group. All right, so I just wanted you to pick that up if you wanted to. You don't have to use that. There's other molds you can use. I'll tell you other things as we go along, but that's what we're gonna start with. Okay, so I have all these guys here. So the one that I want, the ones that I want to do tonight, cause I really want you to see these. We're gonna do this pineapple. Yeah, I think we are gonna do that pineapple. I wasn't, but I think I am. And we're going to use this paint tray tonight. And let's just go ahead and set it up while we're talking about it. We're going to do a really pretty yellow, just any yellow. I'm just going to put a couple, couple dots. Well, I was, but that one's not open. So let's go to an open one. I try not to open more than one, one of the same color at a time. All right, this one's open. And I'm going to show you, I'm just putting two dots of color in here and I want a nice bright green. So we're going to use leaf green for the top of the pineapple. So I have a yellow for the bottom. I have a leaf green for the top. This is the gel colors. And then I'm going to do a pink and we're going to do that plumeria flower. I'm running out of leaf green. That could really be a problem. We're going to do these green, this yellow. It will do two pink plumerias. We'll try to do the leaves green and we're going to save these for another night. Now, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you. Probably I have, but I can't remember. So let's just go over it. I like to do my fondant pieces, my modeling chocolate pieces, my, um, my moldable royal icing pieces. I like to do them in white 
and then just have them done and have them set up because it's easier to paint them, airbrush them, color them, dry dust them. All right, so there we go. I've got some yellow, some leaf green, some pink. I'm going to add some Everclear with a pipette because I want you to see this. When you are painting with these colors, you can airbrush with them since you're going to dilute them with Everclear. But if you do, you need to strain them first. I'm going to show you why in a minute. I'll circle back to that, but let me just get the Everclear on top of the color so they start to dissolve because not all of the colors dissolve the same way. Some of them completely break down um, in the Everclear so you can just paint with it and then the alcohol part evaporates immediately. But some of them, some color leaches up into the Everclear and then some of the gel stays clumpy. So you always want to strain it if you're making your own colors to airbrush with which you can do. You can certainly make your own colors. Oh, something was falling. I thought I was, <laughs> I was about to break something there. I didn't know what was going on. Okay. And I want to pull, is that a little better? I think that looks a little brighter there now. I want to pull one pink color if I have something out to air, to um, dry dust with. Let me see if I have something already out. How about we do a blue? Do you want to do a blue? Let's do blue sterling pearl to dry dust with, just so you can see what it looks like. I like the sterling pearls a lot, you guys, because when you do dry dust with them, um, you get this really, the, the sterling pearls have um, mica in them, so it makes them super sparkly, but like a flat on the cookie sparkle, not like you added glitter, right? <laughs> Sally, you're not, I not do a pineapple. Obviously, I have to do a pineapple. Debbie, are you okay? You should be on that other thing and then come back to us. Are you doing double, are you watching two things? Okay. Um, all right. So here's my colors. Now take a look at this. Just a few helpful tents, hits, tips, and hints. Okay, let's let's talk about that. This is the yellow. And with the Everclear mixed in, okay, so you could like really stir this up and then give it a couple minutes and let the gel, whatever particles um, are heavy, settle to the bottom. You could do that, but I really just pick up my paint from the side. Do you see? There's, it's a lot of color there. I don't even dip in that because I don't want it to get in my brush. So that's my yellow. I'm using disposable brushes. These are on my Amazon shop if you need them. They're basically eyeliner brushes, but they're great for detail work. You can wash them and keep them and use them over and over again, but they're so cheap. I just get rid of them. There's my green without going into the gel. Okay. The pink, you'll be able to see what happens to the gel the best. So I'm actually going to stir that just so you can see what happens, but I don't normally do that. Okay. So do you see that big clump? Like it's just sitting there. Literally it's a blob. Can you see it? You see how it's like slime? Right. So you can mix that up and really try to beat the color out. But then look, all that goop is in your brush. And I don't like that. Ugh, it's stuck on there. So I'm going to try to get it off and leave it in that Everclear. So this is why you can make your own airbrush colors, but you need to strain them. That's a whole nother video. I don't have the time to tell you tonight. OK, I have to get rid of that because it's just disgusting. Um, <laughs> I don't have time to tell you all the ins and outs tonight about that. But my point is different gels react differently to Everclear. And then those same gels may react entirely different to vodka. So you're going to have to do a little practice and you're going to have to do a little mad scientist experiment. Okay. For these things, just so you know. And I just want you to see we've got good color with everything. And now we're going to paint... Um, every, we're going to paint all of these things for our demo tonight, our little tutorial. We're going to paint one of these and both of these so you can see what the colors go on like, okay? So I'm just going to be dabbing this on. It's going right on dried fondant. My fondant is soft in the center, crunchy on the outside. And do you see how, let me just see if I can zoom in a little. It's so hard to remember to stay in frame once I zoom in. So if I get out of frame, 
um, just tell me. I'll try to stay right here, though. Do you see how when you're doing a gel color like this and you're dabbing it on and the extra liquid just starts running into the crevices? That's how you get that cool shading. So all of that is because of the detail of the fondant mold. So it does matter how much detail a fondant mold puts off for you. Um, but do you see that I'm, I'm just dabbing my color on there? This is not, there's no technique involved in this whatsoever when you have a detail mold like this. It's naturally letting extra color gather, and that's how I'm getting those cool lines. So it's not like I'm having to go back and um, spend extra time highlighting those areas. Okay, so I've got that. Oh, guys, if you get a chance, share this video. Help us get a little further reach for the Cookie Snack Attack page and for Seriously Sweet. It helps tremendously so that we can spread out the cost of the live streams. And we're almost qualified for monetization on something new, another level above stars. We're almost there. So there is our hibiscus flower just done with some gel painting on white. Okay. I'm going to slide that to the side. First of all, let me see if I can do, do a little bit of yellow in the center. You could go back once this is dry and deepen that center if you want to. So let's just slide that out of the way. We're going to come right over here, go right into the pineapple. All right. And I'm just going to do the whole bottom in yellow. Let me get, hold on. For the woman who had enough scribes to make an entire tabletop Christmas tree, out of scribes. I can't find one right now. I have too much stuff stacked up on my table because I'm a little behind in my work. All right. So let's just yellow this whole thing. Okay. Let's just let that sink in those areas. You can see how it's naturally shading itself because of the detail from the fondant mold. You guys see that? All right. Now I'm going to switch brushes. Pull this down just a little bit so Sally can see the whole pineapple. By the way, Sally Newton, if you're watching, I saw that you dinged yourself up on the ski slopes, and I sure hope you get better soon. I don't ski anymore because the last time I went skiing, I was younger. It became a George of the Jungle watch out for that tree moment, and it creeped me out so bad and messed my knee up that I decided that was just not going to be a thing for me. Inner tubing on the snow, fine, totally cool with that. Still seems a little scary, but skiing is off the bucket list. It is not part of my bucket list. And Sally, I hope you're okay. All right, let's get this covered. I'm just going to dab in there, let that extra sit in the cracks between the stem or the plume on this pineapple, whatever you want to call it. Dab it all down in there. My husband and my mom are in the other room and I hear noise coming from there. I don't know if they're watching me live or not, but if you are, hi, mom. Hey, Brian. Hey, doe dude. They can watch on YouTube in the other room. Sometimes he watches and then later he, he tells me about my broadcast. <laughs> All right. So there's our pineapple. We have a plumeria done. Let's just go ahead and do this leaf. Let's pull it down into frame here. And I'm just, you guys, I'm serious. There's no skill to doing it this way. The alcohol is evaporating immediately. The color is staying behind. It's going to dry, perfectly dry. Um, that little bit of extra color that's in there is, is going to stay there. And so it's going to give me good definition as long as I had good definition when I started. It's not going to give me definition if I didn't have good definition in the medium that I was using when I made the item that I'm painting. I hope that makes sense. So if your mold is not detailed or you didn't capture the detail in your piece before it set out to dry and before you started painting it, you're not going to get good detail. You're then going to have to have some skill and go back and actually do real painting. So for beginners, this is a really great way to get started. I'm dropping some extra color in my grooved areas here. Okay. Just let it sit. I want that as that evaporates. 
especially on this leaf, there's some areas where it's kind of enclosed. So if you drop extra color in there, it's going to stay dark like that. All right. So that is for you guys to see. Let's put this up here. Then I'm going to pull this one back in and we're going to do blue dry dusting. I'm going to go back out a little more just so I'm sure we stay in frame here. <laughs> Hi, babe. They're watching. I can hear it now. So this is Sterling Pearl Baby Boy. It's a blue. I just want you to see what it looks like on the Plumeria flower. I'm going to pick up just a little bit. We're going to do a little dabbing over here because we want to offload some of that product. It's just a little too thick. And then I'm going to grab that toothpick again. Just kind of anchor it. And then I'm going to dab that. And as I'm dabbing the color on the cookie, because this has the mica in it, can you guys see? Can you see how you're getting that nice? pearlized color because you're basically activating the mica or drawing that that pearl part that's what creates the pearl is the mica the pearl shimmer so it's, it looks like this in the jar but on the cookie it actually looks a baby blue color and then you get that beautiful sheen to it isn't that nice look at that all right so that is the difference in what dry dusting let's look at these together let me close this up though we don't want to spill this is the difference. Um, I see that you are on here. I'm not going to call you out by name because I don't know if it's okay to or not until I get to know you. But this is the difference in what a dry dusted finish would look like versus doing hand painting with the gel color. And let's go out a little further so you guys can see all of the pieces. All right, so this, you can see the difference of this versus this. Now, one of the things I like to do when I do these pieces, if I'm going to make them, paint them, and I know I'm going to be storing them, I'm going to let them dry completely, and then I'm going to spray them with PME Glaze Spray, the clear one, or with the pearl if I want to, if it's something I want pearlized. But the PME Confectioner's glaze spray will make them stay super shiny because they're going to get more matte and color as they dry. All right. So let's see. We have a few comments over here. Oh, let me use my mouse. Woo -woo. Okay. Hold on. Is it working though? I don't see it. I might have to wake it up again. There we go. Is it working? Um, nope, not working. So I'm sorry. You might have to see my hand for a second. Let's see. Hello there. All right. Um, thick and slimy. Yeah. You want to stay out of the slimy part. Just let it sit. The reason I put it up here is so you, oop, 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 oop. Got to get that off my keyboard. I want, let it sit up there so you can see. Do you see how it continues to dissolve just a little bit more? Right. But that pink, that pink is still one just big clump. It's just really gross. So if you're going to make your own colors to airbrush and save them separately um, in the little containers that have like the needle point tips that you can squirt through, make sure you strain it before you put it in there. You don't want any of that to make its way into your airbrush gun. I promise you it is a massive headache, massive, massive headache down this oh the mountain bike well we have to do that when there's no snow though i wouldn't mind trying that last time allison all retreat was at snowshoe mountain west virginia and they had bike paths and you could take the mountain bikes down and it was basically graded like the ski slopes are graded so they had like some super easy ones and then some really hard ones so i wouldn't mind doing that but also i just liked riding the lift it was beautiful beautiful view um beautiful pink mouse. You like my pink mouse? It was like 14 bucks on Amazon. If anybody needs the link, you guys let me know. I think it goes to sleep often though. So I'm going to turn it off and back on and see if it'll connect again. I was really just trying to keep you from, ha is it back? Yeah, there we go. I was really just trying to keep you guys from having to look at my arm in the video shot all the time because I'm still using my laptop as my main computer. Hey, Sean, how are you? Okay, so how are we looking here? Everybody like what they're seeing here to get an idea? You know how to seal them if you want to seal them. I never seal these um, because I don't like 
when the glaze hits the dry powder, it kind of makes it go watercolory. So normally that's not a look I want, but with this new um, pressed flower, dried flower, wildflower looking craze that's going on right now, it actually would be really pretty. So you can try it, do a mad scientist experiment, post some stuff in the group if you feel like it. I'd love to see it. Hey, Lavelle, it's good to see you. Again, a shout out to Julie Goen, who turned in her Easter collaboration cookie pictures first. Becky Norton was right behind her. Mary Ridley was hot on their tail. Three people have their pieces finished. The group is now closed. If you're missing your album, if I haven't created it, please message me and let me create the album so that um, it matches everybody else's. And if you have any questions about that, let me know. I'm so excited. I'm going to have my cutter and time to start mine and get mine in. Mm, anything else I wanted to tell you guys tonight? Oh, I wanted to show you this too before we go. These should be dry enough now to do this and not mess anything up terribly bad. I'm going to pull up a little bit of our metallic gold. I, you guys know I keep it in this little jelly jar. Let me see. I need, might need to put some more Everclear in here to activate it. If you if you mix this with lemon extract or something that doesn't evaporate fully, um, then you can't leave it like this. So I always put mine in a jelly jar and I use Everclear with it. And that way it evaporates and then I close the lid and that way I can keep reusing the product. So I'm just going to activate enough of it to grab some gold. I'm using a brush that I only use for gold. I'm going to dab it on the side here. I'm going to grab that toothpick again. I should be using a scribe. I'm going to grab the toothpick again, hold my pineapple in place. I'm going to offload some of that product because I don't want to cover the whole pineapple. I want to turn my brush on the side. I just want to try to catch those ridges and some accents down here at the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top. I'm laying sideways and just going across and that way I'm just catching the ridges. So another fun thing to do before you seal it, let me zoom in because this really is very pretty. Another fun thing to do before you seal it with your confectioner's glaze. Do you guys want to see it on this leaf? Let me know over in the comments if you would like to see the gold on the, it's probably a monstera leaf. That's probably what that is. Anybody want to see the gold on the monstera leaf? Anybody? More gold. And how about a little gold right here with our blue? I'll just dab that on. So the whole thing's gold. That's kind of pretty, right? All right, let's grab a little bit more of this gold. It just evaporates so fast when you don't reactivate everything, right? All right, here we go. Just make sure I've offloaded some. Let's hold this in place. Turning my brush, a flat brush on its side. I'm going to hold this in place and I'm going to come across this. Like this. Okay. Pick up a little more and get that area. And that way it just highlights the top. A little bit of green shows through, but you also have those deep grooves. I would do all of this. And if you're going to do the gold, I would do it before you do PME glaze because then the PME glaze will seal your gold as well. All right, so there, let me put this on a clean piece of parchment for the end. What does that say? Hold on, let me see what this says. I can't, my screen has such a glare on it. More gold. Did we all say more gold? More gold. And I love the gold. I think gold mixed in with the um, tropical in the summertime is just gorgeous, especially for like tropical weddings. It's so pretty. Allison said, sure. That's what, it, sure. <laughs> Okay, now you could hit the trifecta here because we have a metallic. We did some hand painting. And if you want to hit it with a little diamond dust, you could do that too on these. Um, after you seal it, the diamond dust, you would do like spray it. And then while it's wet, hit it with the diamond dust. So you could go another level if you want to. And that um, the confectioner spray glaze is going to be tacky and wet. So it's going to hold on to your diamond dust really well. So that'll make it super easy for you as you're bagging things. But let's get all these onto a clean piece so you can see them. I'm going to set this over here. 
just get this out of the way for now. And then that is our tutorial, the second part of our tutorial for tonight. Does anybody have any questions on dates that we went over? I want to make sure that you guys know it's all at the beginning of the video. We also talked about Cookieathon. There's links to purchase your extended access for Cookieathon pinned at the top of all of my pages. So see how pretty those are? And these are all things, guys, preparation equals profit. Planning equals profit. I can't stress that enough. So when you're doing designs and you want to be mixing in like one super fancy feature cookie, and then you want a bunch of cookies that you can do really fast, then you need that mid-level cookie where you need it to look like a feature cookie, but it can't take feature cookie amount of time. This is how you start working towards that. Mixing in little embellishments like this that just next level your cookie. Let's see. The name on the mold. Let me. Um, I don't think so. It was. Let me go back out. I don't think there's a name on here, but I'll flip it over. But it was in the clay section at Michael's, but there's no name. And I. it's from last year. They do still have it, though, because I saw it in the store. Um, but... I think it was like beach or summertime or maybe even beach fun, something like that. Um, but they did still have it. That's why I'm showing it to you in case you want to grab it in case Michael's changes it out before summertime. Cause we definitely are going to be using that. Hey, Hey, you're never late as long as you show up for the party. Hello. Hello. All right. So any questions on anything tonight, guys? Hey, Jesse Ann, how are you? Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Don't forget. Next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Jen Mosier is going to be with us. We're going to do cocoa butter painting on these fabulous, um, I think they're long stem, I think it was long stem tulips. It could have been long stem roses, but I think it's long stem tulips that she's going to do cocoa butter painting on and do a demo about that. Uh, if you're a beginner and you're in the group, you're not going to want to miss this because it's a fabulous way to start painting. This was easy for you, okay? This really is like beginner level easy and where you can prep things and do a lot of things ahead of time. Uh, so you are can do these things well before you have to make the cookies so you're not doing so much the night you need to do your cookies or the week you need to do your cookies. But cocoa butter painting, you can blend it as you do your layers. It smells delicious and tastes great. So if you are a beginner, please don't miss that, okay? Now, this link will be live as soon as the live stream ends. Mimi, if you could type in which page you're on. Are you on Seriously Sweet, Cookie Snack Attack, Amy Hicks? I don't think you're on YouTube, okay? You are very welcome. Very, very welcome. And someone saw it the other day in a Texas, Michael. So that's good. You guys still have it in your store too. Hey, Jesse Ann. So, um... Anyway, next Tuesday night, I have something different planned for Tuesday morning, but next Tuesday night, Jen Mosier, we're going to do cocoa, but she's, she's going to do a cocoa butter painting tutorial. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m., you're going to want to be on right at 7 p.m. if you're going to Cookie Con Ohio Sandusky and you're going to the Cookie Snack Attack Mixer. If you're attending that, you're going to need to be on tomorrow promptly at 7, unless, caveat, unless I have a family emergency, I'll be on right at 7. I'll chat for a little bit first in case someone's late. I'll send out a text notification so you'll get a reminder. So sign up for text alerts, okay? This is all pretty important stuff because this is limited. Only 60 people can sign up. And the first night that we even talked to you about this, we had 48 people that said, okay, totally interested and want tickets. And you can be the person that buys all the tickets for your people. So Becky, Barbie, Mary, if you're on here and you're all three going and you all three want to attend the mixer, who whoever can purchase three tickets instead of all of you purchasing tickets, it's not going to be limited to one ticket per person. So you can purchase three if you want to, but please only purchase tickets for people that you know are going because it's going to be, a, I have a lot going on right now, not to put any of that on you guys, but I have a lot going on and it's going to be a lot easier for me if we sell these tickets out immediately. And then within a week, you guys all get your stuff turned in and you do your money so that I can send the forms and the money onto Ohio and it's off my plate and I don't have to worry about it because these are non-refundable. 
You can give your meal to somebody else if you end up not going to Cookie Con, but we're not going to be able to change the meals. And we're not going to be able to refund them if you don't go. Okay. So we just need to get all of the tickets sold, the meals paid for, everything ordered, get it turned in. So it's off my plate. Okay. I appreciate you guys so much. So sign up for live stream text alerts by texting the word live stream, all capital letters, all one word to 540-870-0726. And I will see you guys tomorrow night at 7 p.m. It was wonderful spending time with you again tonight. Um, let me see what this is. Okay, so Mimi thinks she's in the cookie snack attack page. So on that page, that link for the mold will be a live link as soon as the broadcast ends, okay? You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Share the broadcast. Um, you can always, if you ever feel so inclined to make a donation to Cookie Snack Attack to keep the live stream going or to improve equipment, you can always do that on the coffee shop site. I appreciate all of that monthly support over there. And that's building every month, which is nice because it takes a lot of the pressure off so that we can do the free live streams. Don't forget this month. Um, at the end of the week, I'm going to try to start these boxes from Sweet and Saucy Life, a cookie life box. And then also we have things releasing, which I'll tell you about again tomorrow night, but we have new product releasing um, starting on Friday. I think that's it. If anybody has any questions, you can post them here. Just make sure you tag me so I see it or message me. You guys, uh, most of you are connected on my personal page too. So you should be able to message me if you need something. 